Pyramids have puzzled myriads for thousands of years. Far-fetched theories have been woven to fill in the void, most being evidence psyops. Mainstream conclusions eventually leaving the truth seeker throwing up their hands, giving up altogether, trying to understand their mysteries. As one strays the path of mainstream sheep-fed stories and does research of his own, many new paths begin to open up. And venturing through them, mysteries begin to reveal themselves. As more puzzle pieces are found and pieced together, the truth seeker begins to form a clear image. In ancient books, it speaks of fallen angels, angels that defected from their positions in the heavens to enjoy for themselves the women of earth, whom pleasing to the eye they lusted after and became enamored with them. Unable to resist their woman, they swore an oath that they would take for themselves wives from the sons of men, and for them they would bear children. In return, the angels would teach women knowledge unknown to mankind at the time. Sound familiar to the story of Eve eating fruit from the tree of knowledge and good and evil? The story of Eve is an allegory to such events. Forbidden knowledge was taught to women. Giant offsprings were born to the fallen angels, and the whole earth was plunged into such a state of wickedness that the very existence of mankind was threatened as the giants began to turn upon them for sustenance when nothing else was found to satisfy their appetite. The very cries of mankind reach heaven to the very ears of God, and judgment is past. For their grievous crimes the angels never shall return home to heaven, and their sons the giants shall be incited to destroy one another, leaving the fallen angels without home and barren of children, afterwards to be thrown into and confined within caverns until the great day of judgment. The angels are devastated to learn of their fate, and in their seething rage, they join with each other and conceive a rebellion to take their revenge upon God. Their defiance will bring such great tragedy and destruction to the earth and to the sons of men that the world would never be the same. A past history which has been hidden from us, of which most are unaware. In a unified purpose, weapons of mass destruction known to us as pyramids are built throughout the entire earth as to send multiple focused energy blasts crashing into the dome overburdening it with such intense pressure that it would shatter. The barrier separating heaven and earth then opened, they would reclaim for themselves the place they called home. In the Book of Enoch, a book many believe should be included in scripture lies the story of fallen angels, their defiance, and answers to the riddle of how and why the world has come to be the way it is today. Many yet do not perceive the world as it truly is, a barren wasteland, not in and of itself, but compared to the beauty and natural wealth it was once clothed with. How angels in their seethingly hot anger stripped it of its beauty. Opening the book of Enoch is written this beautiful introduction. The word of the blessing of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous, who were to exist in the time of trouble, rejecting all the wicked and ungodly. This book was written not for that time, but for the time we live in, and for those who reject evil and seek goodness, those who reject corrupt governments and have eyes to differentiate deceitful organizations who have risen up against humanity, having their roots in wickedness, though their leaves show a pretense, a masquerade of good covering evil. They are wolves in sheep's clothing, leading countless sheep away unbeknownst. It gets interesting in chapter 7 of the book of Enoch, where it begins the ancient tale of the fallen angels. Chapter 7 It happened after the sons of men had multiplied in those days that daughters were born to them, elegant and beautiful. And when the angels, the sons of heaven, beheld them, they became enamored of them, saying to each other, Come, let us select for ourselves wives from men and let us beget children. And their leader, Semiyaza, said to them, I fear that you may perhaps be indisposed to the performance of this enterprise, 
and that I alone shall suffer so grievous a crime. But they answered and said to him, We all swear and bind ourselves by mutual execrations that we will not change our intention, but execute our projected undertaking. And then they swore all together and bound themselves by mutual execrations. Their whole number was two hundred who descended upon Ardis, which is the top of Mount Armin. That mountain therefore was called Armin because they had sworn upon it and bound themselves by mutual execrations. Samyaza being their leader, they then took wives, each choosing for himself, whom they began to approach and with whom they cohabited, teaching them sorcery, incantations, and the dividing of roots and trees. And the woman conceiving brought forth giants, whose stature was each three hundred cubits. These devoured all, which the labor of men produced, until it became impossible to feed them, when they turned themselves against men in order to devour them, and began to injure birds, beasts, reptiles, and fishes to eat their flesh one after another, and to drink their blood. Then the earth reproved the unrighteous. The fallen angels then began to teach men arts and technology meant to be kept secret, from them at the time, as Aziel, one of the other angels, taught men to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, and the fabrication of mirrors. Amazarach taught all the sorcerers and dividers of roots. Tamil taught astronomy. These were some of the corruptions among many others that the fallen angels taught men, so that the world became altered. Impiety increased, fornication multiplied, and they transgressed and corrupted all their ways. And men being destroyed cried out, and their voice reached to heaven. Then Michael and Gabriel, Raphael, Surreal, and Uriel looked down from heaven and saw the quantity of blood which was shed on earth, and all the iniquity which was done upon it, and said to one another, It is the voice of their cries. The earth deprived of her children has cried even to the gate of heaven. Below on the earth was a bloodbath. Angels above bring an account to God, saying, Thou knowest what is happening below, yet thou dost not speak to us. What on account of these things ought we to do to them? God tells them that a flood would cover the earth and cleanse it of wickedness. Then God passes a harsh punishment upon the fallen angels, a judgment none could have foreseen. As a zeal would be bound and cast into darkness where he would remain forever. To the children of the fallen angels, he would excite them between one another so that they would slaughter one another. To Samyaza and to the others who were with him, all their sons would be slain. After witnessing the perdition of their beloved ones, they would all be bound for seventy generations under the earth. Afterwards, they would be taken away into the lowest depths of the fire and torments, and in confinement shall they be shut up forever. All the souls addicted to dalliance, and the offspring of the watchers who have tyrannized over mankind will be destroyed. Every last one fated to perish from the face of the earth. But the saints would live until they had begotten a thousand children. The Lord said to Enoch, Go, tell the watchers of heaven who have deserted the lofty sky and their holy everlasting station, who have been polluted with women and have done as the sons of men do by taking for themselves wives, and who have been greatly corrupted on the earth, that on the earth they shall never obtain peace and remission of sin. For they shall not rejoice in their offspring. They shall behold the slaughter of their beloved, shall lament for the destruction of their sons, and shall petition forever, but shall not obtain mercy and peace. At hearing this decree, the fallen angels become terrified and tremble, they beseech Enoch to write for him a memorial of supplication, that they might obtain forgiveness, because they could not for themselves thenceforward adjust God, nor raise up their eyes to heaven, on account of the disgraceful offense for which they were judged, a request that would be denied. In a vision, it is shown to Enoch that the request of the fallen angels will not be granted them as long as the world endures. Enoch awakens from his vision and goes to the fallen angels whom collected together stood weeping with their faces veiled. Enoch tells the angels what fate God has condemned them to, saying, From this time forward never shall you ascend into heaven, that on the earth he will bind you 
as long as the world endures. But before these things you shall behold the destruction of your beloved sons, who shall not possess them, but they shall fall before you by the sword. Neither shall you entreat for them, nor for yourselves, but you shall weep and supplicate and silence. You ought to pray for men and not men for you, therefore never shall you obtain peace. At hearing this tragic news, the angels are appalled. At the thought of losing everything they left heaven for, their very children murdered before their eyes. And so they come together and conceive a rebellion against God himself. We've come to the earth and carved for ourselves our own paths and our own destiny apart from God. And so we shall do it once more and protect our beloved ones and take back for ourselves what is rightfully ours. The voice echoes, never shall you ascend into heaven. The thought of never returning home stung enough, but to lose everything they held dear was unbearable. And so their anger was kindled. Seething rage burned within their souls and they conspired against God himself to shatter the dome firmament and take back from themselves everything they had lost. And so a rebellion was birthed. They conspired to build weapons of mass destruction throughout the earth with the purpose of unleashing such unconceivable force at the firmament that it would overburden it with pressure and shatter. The barrier separating heaven and earth then opened, they would take their revenge. The pyramids still to this day remain an enigma, scattered throughout the earth, all similar to each other, yet built with such advanced engineering and technology that credit for their creation cannot be attributed to mortals. It is evident that the pyramids are the unified purpose of one entity, and not of human efforts. To believe earthly civilizations so far apart from each other build similar structures with such advanced techniques is preposterous. And so the fallen angels in the wrath build weapons of mass destructions, which still to this day exist, and are what we now know to be the Great Pyramids. The pyramids built are charged up, they gather such great energy, and with a great blast of multiple energy beams, the dome separating heaven and earth is struck, taking a massive blow. Violent reverberations are spread throughout the entire firmament as it begins to shatter, deafening sound heard screeching throughout the whole earth. Though their efforts, the firmament stands firm, it prevails and proves to be impenetrable, and so they abandon the pyramids and the angel turned their eyes towards men and the earth. Why should they enjoy the home created them while we wander without, they say in their desperation and their seething rage. And so they begin to destroy what was once our home, laying waste beauty and natural wealth. The world will never be the same, a past history which has been hidden from us of which most are unaware. Many still do not perceive the world as it truly is, a barren wasteland, not in and of itself, but compared to the beauty and natural wealth it once was clothed with. It is written in countless ancient texts, including scripture, that giant trees existed. Giant, as in the redwoods of California, would be dwarfed in comparison to them. These trees truly made the earth to be a paradise. Only the stumps of these gigantic trees would remain, the most famous of which is called Devil's Tower in Wyoming. It is without doubt the remains of a giant tree and not as a scientific community purports it to be, cooled magma. It has the very resemblance of regular trees, only stretched out to an enormous size. In no way ever could lava cool to create such patterns. For more info, I highly recommend you watch the video named There Are No Forests on Flat Earth. The Book of Enoch saw the day coming when angels would destroy these trees, saying, Now then shall the angels labor at the trees, but when they proceed to this, I will put my hand upon it and preserve it. It says, They shall labor at the trees, plural, and also I will put my hand upon it and preserve it. The tree preserved is singular. I believe that one giant tree was preserved and is at the center of the earth in northern midst where so many myths and ancient civilizations believe paradise to be. For more info on this hidden arctic land, watch my video Gerard Mercator and the hidden arctic land. I will place a link at the end of this video to it. 
Every last resource on earth is squandered by these angels. Do not look at the Grand Canyon as the erosion of millions of years, but rather as the destruction of angels, at the jealousy of losing their homes, and at you still having one. The destruction of the angels and giants set against us is so terrible that God calls a flood, that all the earth shall perish, that the waters of a deluge shall come over the whole earth, and all things which are in it shall be destroyed, but for eight, Noah and his Today one can clearly see for themselves the remains of these giants spoken of in countless ancient books and also orally passed down as lore in certain tribes of peoples. The remains of giants can be seen within landscapes throughout the earth. Today they are known as mud fossils. Recently, scientists discover that pyramids at Giza can store energy within its chambers. So, this idea of the pyramids being weapons of mass destruction may very well be plausible. Interestingly, the three stars known as Orion's Belt line up perfectly with the three great pyramids of Giza, and also with the Milky Way. So, could the Milky Way be a rift? A crack in the dome firmament from the energy blast that came forth from the great pyramids at Giza? Also, interestingly, Orion is an archer, one who shoots arrows, and so it would have been a clever constellation for the fallen angels to have shot the beams. The pyramids to this day still remains an enigma. What I have spoken in this video is from my mind theorizing and speculating to form a satisfactory answer as to how the pyramids came to be. I suppose there is a time coming when its mysteries will be revealed without a doubt. Open up your eyes and see There's more to our story